just a little bit more. Be right with you. Okay, I think everybody's watered. Well, maybe a little bit for you too. Yeah, I want to make sure everybody's happy before we get filming. Don't want any grumbling or anything like that. Welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host. This is the side of the Voodoo Garden you don't normally see. Normally, I'm sitting over there like a lump on a, on a, on a log, and I thought, you know, I have a whole other section of the Voodoo Garden that I don't normally show people. Might as well show you. So this is it. I, un I uh, undid some of the lights because if I had all of these lights going while I filmed, you wouldn't see me. You'd just see this washed out thing with arms waving. And uh, so I had to turn off a lot of the lights. When I film, it's a lot different than when it's actually a functioning room. I have the fan going normally, which keeps the air circulating, which I like. And I also have different bulbs going. These are the low Kelvin bulbs, and these are the ones that look more yellow than anything. That way I don't look like I, I have anemia going on, and it makes me look a little bit better, and I need all the help I can get. So creative lighting. <laughs> <laughs> creative lighting a behind the scenes look yeah it's actually a behind the scenes look see hold on oh. see folks can you see this ah yeah I actually have stage lighting for my videos I don't just sit there so just so as you appreciate what I do for you anyway um so uh I was going through a, a problem in the last episode and um I didn't know what was going on. Everything was just having a really bad hair day. They're all dying. They're all crumbling up. They're all having this chlorosis fading out and stuff. And I, I was like, what is the problem? And uh, I've always been a little bit of a scientist. So I took this as a challenge and it was actually kind of fun. I tried to figure out what it was. Got me a, a test kit, a soil test kit, which I've always wanted. And uh, so I got me a soil test kit. I tested the soil. The soil's fine. NPK is fine. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Nit nitrogen was a little bit high, but that's going on to my second part of this, this little thing in my hand here. So um, the soil was fine, and I thought it would be uh, kind of weird if the soil all of a sudden went bad. How can the soil in so many different pots go bad at the exact same time? Not going to happen. So I ruled that out. And then I thought, well, uh, is it the water? That was my next thing. I thought, well, it's got to be the water, right? So I got a water test kit, and here's what it looks like. Yep. Yep. It's by WaterSafe, which is a good brand. And um, this thing tests for, let me see if I can focus in on this. It tests for bacteria, including coliform bacteria, um, pesticides, nitrates, nitrites, lead, iron, uh, hardness, pH, har uh, hardness, pH, chlorine, copper, donuts. It tests for everything. If it's in your water, you're going to find out. Well, all the, all the biggies. And, uh, you know, uh, the, test, the test results were actually kind of surprising. Do you know what was wrong with my water? Nothing. <laughs> ha! Nothing was wrong with my water. The only thing that this showed that was uh, wrong with my water is the nitrate level was four times what it normally is for regular drinking water. And the nitrate level is, is due to the runoff from the uh, fields around my property because my well is in this low area and it's a shallow well. There are two different kinds of wells and uh, one is a shallow which is called a uh, dug well and they call them sandpoint wells. They're very shallow, they're cheap and uh, they're easy to, to do. And then the second kind are the drilled wells. Those are the ones that go past the, the first water table into the deep, deep water which is generally the pure water. And uh, so I, I'm going to have one of those done this next year. I'm going to show you how it's done on the Praxis 55712 channel. And uh, But anyway, I tested my water and uh, there was nothing wrong with it. There's no, there's no bacteria. There's no uh, anything wrong with it. So my water is actually pretty good aside from the nitrate level. And uh, that doesn't bother the plants. If anything, it's going to make them greener. So I thought, crap, what am I going to do? I got to figure this out. The only thing left over that was that could have been the problem was my fertilizer and my fertilizer was organic and it's the uh, age old grow and I don't blame the age old grow people because it was doing fine and then I got this stuff called grow amp in a little tiny container of it and I opened up mine and I mixed it in and I don't blame the person who sent me the grow amp because uh, it was perfectly sealed you know so uh, I was thinking well maybe something happened when I combined the two and uh, it was in an airtight container and something happened and maybe it just went bad. Don't know, don't care. I don't really try to overthink anything, you know. I just go by, okay, well, what is the problem? Get rid of the problem. Get on with your life. Have a good day. And so that's what I did. 
I stopped using the organic fertilizer that I had and I started supplementing, well not supplementing, replaced with the miracle Grow liquid as a, a, a stabilizer for this to keep the plants alive until I could find another organic fertilizer because I prefer to grow organic if at all possible because although miracle Grow will get your plants green and going and stuff, I don't, I prefer, I personally don't like to use it on my plants because of what I said it does to the soil in the long run. So um, I used the miracle Grow, and what, what it did was it greened everything up. Now if it was the water, it wouldn't have worked because if, there, if the water's poisoned, it doesn't matter what you put in there. You can put Kool-Aid in there, you can put beer in there. No matter what you put in that water, it is not going to help your plants if that water is poisoned water. Not going to work. So uh, I knew it was a fertilizer. I thought, crap! So I'm looking for another fertilizer to replace it. I think I might have found one. It's uh, called Grow Big and it's, uh, I don't know if it's pure organic, but some people say it's a blend of organic and inorganic. And I thought, wow, that's actually kind of cool, huh? Where they actually come together and uh, work together. And uh, so I'm gonna, t I'm gonna read up on that a little bit more and I may end up uh, using that in my grow room because that would be good. That way you get the benefits of inorganic for feeding your plants right off the bat, but you also get the benefits of organic which is gonna feed the soil. And I thought, wow, why not use both of them and see how that works? So um, it's called Grow Big and I don't know who makes it, but um, I don't know, I'll uh, figure it out and I'll let you guys know if it works. So anyway, everything's working pretty good. Kinda cool, huh? So I'm happy about that. And um, I was at the grocery store uh, buying groceries and you know, I don't know if, you, if this happens to you, but with me, I go through the produce section. That's the first place I go in a grocery store. I don't know why, I just like it. I guess it's because it's green. And uh, I, I don't really so much look for what I can eat, I look for what I can grow. So I got two mangoes and uh, uh, I, was, I just grabbed them out of there and I didn't care if they were ripe or not because I wasn't gonna eat them. I thought, well, I can sit them here and I can wait until they're, they're ripe and I can eat them. But I wanted them for the seeds because I used to grow a mango tree and everybody keeps asking me, Ray, what's the update on the mango tree? Well, sorry to tell you folks, but that mango tree died years ago. Yeah, it died in the spider mite invasion of 2012 at my old home. And uh, those of you that have been tuning in for a long time, you know how bad that was. It killed most of my cocoa army, the chocolate trees that I, were, I was growing and it killed the mango. So the mango didn't survive, but I got two mangoes. One of them was red, one of them was green. And I thought, wow, are these like different kinds of mangoes? Don't know, don't care. I brought them home and I set them on the counter, forgot about them for a few days, and then they ripened up. So uh, I was getting the seeds and I got the bonus of being able to eat the mango. So I'm at the sink, like this little piggy, and I'm slicing up the mangoes, shoving them in my face. I'm looking for the seed, eat more mango. So I had a good day. I ate the mangoes and I got the seeds and I put them both into a little cup with nothing but vermiculite. And uh, that's the stuff that's, uh, it's made out of volcanic rock. It's 100% natural, it's 100% neutral. You don't have to worry about any kind of weird stuff in it. And I added some water. So hopefully, keep your fingers crossed folks for the Voodoo Garden mangoes to start up again. And I also saw these. These are called pecans. Yeah, they grow on a tree. For those of you who don't know what a pecan is, and you no, know, they don't grow in a can, salted, but um, they actually grow on a tree and uh, Susan, a friend of mine, and I haven't heard from her in ages, but she had a YouTube channel called Cross Pecans, I believe. And uh, she sent me pecans off her tree, fresh pecans right off the tree. And I put them into a container and I kept them warm for a couple days. And that's how you germinate pecans, by the way. You uh, toss them into a cup full of water and you put them on a heating pad and you keep them warm. You know, like uh, kind of like if you put your hand in warm water, it would feel kind of warm. That kind of warm. Don't know what the temperature is. Don't know. Don't care. And um, what will happen is the shell will split. And once the shell splits, that means it's germinating. Then you hurry up and take it out there, toss it in soil and grow. And I grew uh, pecan trees this way at my old place. They didn't survive for long because I didn't have the proper lighting at the time. The voodoo garden was not as advanced as it is today. And uh, so I got these at the store and these have been soaking for a few days. But you know what? I don't believe they're going to germinate because the date on these, I don't know why they would brag about this. They put the date as January 2014. And I'm thinking, that's over a year old. What is wrong with you people? Why can't you just sell these when you pick them? That's, yeah. So I got old seeds, so I'm just going to have to eat those. And um, then I saw uh, gin, uh, not ginseng, um, ginger, ginger. Those of you who have not seen what ginger looks like, Yep, it's this weird, funky looking thing. It's a root. Yeah, ginger is a root. 
And normally you, you uh, have an Asian foods and, and, and desserts and stuff like that. They peel it, they grate it. It smells wonderful. Oh, it smells great. I'm gonna rub it all over you. So I um, found this ginger root and I thought, hey, I can grow ginger. So I'm gonna take this whole thing. I know you can break them apart, but you basically grow them like a potato. You just throw them in the ground and they grow and you can have ginger plants. So I'm gonna try and grow a ginger here. Yeah, I know gingers don't have souls. But anyway, I got this. This was when I went uh, to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and I stopped in at this little Mexican food place, and they have tamarind pods, which come off of a tree, and I planted it, and uh, you know, I'm gonna stop going back and forth. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just show you what's going on over here, but I got all kinds of stuff. That's what I wanted to tell you about, is that there's so many things from the store, and that's what I do, like uh, you can get oranges, uh, any kind of orange, uh, as long as it has a seed, and uh, you can actually take the, the seed and grow it. Apples, you can do the same thing. And I know there's those purists out there. They're gonna say, if you grow an avocado or an apple or an orange, you're not gonna get fruit from it. Garbage, you're gonna get fruit from it. You're, you're just not gonna get the same kind of fruit that it came from probably because they're grafted and stuff like that. Who cares? Do you, uh, does anybody honestly believe that I believe that I'm gonna grow an orange or avocado tree in here or a, a, a cocoa tree and I'm gonna get fruit from it? No. No, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I, well, I may be a little bit silly, but I'm not crazy and, and I'm not stupid. I'm only growing these because I like to grow them. You know, I, over here, I got the sugar cane. You know, I don't, I don't believe that I'm gonna be competing with CNH and be producing sugar in my voodoo garden, but I'm growing them for fun because somebody sent me those. I'm, I'm growing this, um, what are you? <laughs> I already forgot. Oh. <laughs> I'm growing a tamarind. A tamarind is a huge tree. And uh, I'm growing it because I want to grow it. And uh, uh, there's a, a tree called a durian. And if you've ever heard of a durian, most of you cringe unless you're from the Philippines or, or over on, on that side of the world where they actually like this stuff. And it, I think it's just an acquired taste because most people that smell durian, they smell, they said it smells like, ugh, it smells like something died and then they rolled it up in, in pecans and, and buried it for a few years. It's just the most horrible smell. But, but, another on the other side of the coin, people used to think that uh, Limburger cheese, I mean, people nowadays, they wouldn't eat Limburger, Limburger cheese. But back in the day, like about 40, 50 years ago, it was one of the most popular cheeses in the United States. I have no idea why. I've smelled Limburger cheese. There's no way. You ain't putting that on anything I'm going to eat. But um, let me show you. Let me show you something instead of talking and doing this all the time because my arm's getting tired. I wanna show you what's going on in the Voodoo Garden because there's some good stuff going on. Come on over here and let's start way up here. Does this look familiar? I don't know if I showed it on video, but um, this thing is doing fantastic. This is a zucchini plant. Yeah, and take a look. We have zucchini flowers. Lots and lots of zucchini flowers coming on. Yep, all kinds of things you can grow inside and you don't have to have any kind of special skill because trust me, I do not. This is a zucchini and hopefully, well, those are male flowers. Hopefully the females will come along soon and hopefully I'll have some zucchini. And uh, this is the little gem lettuce. Remember I sent out the seeds? Yep, little gem lettuce is doing good. I've grown this before and uh, this is a plant that you have to be a little bit careful this is called a moonflower. Well, I call it a moonflower, but it's also called a sacred detura. And it's a noxious weed in many places. And, uh, but the flower is beautiful and they bloom only at night. And they attract a moth called the hawk moth. And that, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the hawk moth is the, the adult version of that caterpillar that eats your tomatoes, the tomato hornworm. Yep. So the hawk moth actually pollinates these flowers. And this was showing some real bad distress last time. This is my tobacco, my Shirazi tobacco. No, I do not smoke. But I like to grow tobacco because tobacco plants are very sticky underneath their leaves and they catch these little gnats and bad things that attack your plants. And they have actually beautiful flowers. They go really tall. I'm gonna hopefully grow this outdoors this year because it gets around six feet tall. And it's a nice plant, but look, see, I stopped using that organic fertilizer and it's coming back green because it was looking like it wanted to die. Not anymore. 
I hope this plant does good. I uh, received two seeds from somebody and they were for fava beans, F-A-V-A. -A. And uh, every, yeah, everybody that hears about fava beans, they think of Silence of the Lambs, but you know, fava beans get a bad rap. They are beautiful seeds. Let me show you a picture of what a fava bean looks like. Yep, it's a work of art and I'm gonna grow this indoors and hopefully I can get some beans from it. I wanted to do an update on this because this plant is doing really good. It was totally unaffected by the issues I was having with the other plants. And that's one of the nice thing about pothos. They are strong. If you ever want a plant that can really take the abuse and can take dimmer light and uh, forgetting to water it, pothos are wonderful plants. They, you know, you can just beat the heck out of them and they'll just come back and say, I would like more, please. This was a little plant when I got it and I buried it deep. I made sure I buried the stems because any part of the stem from a pothos that you bury will grow roots. And let me show you something up close. Right, right up here, you can see where there's a root coming out of the plant going into the soil. Yep, this uh, whole stem goes down a few inches, and I believe that all of those parts of the stem with the nubs formed roots. And let me show you what the nubs look like. Let me lift this up for you. I think this is important because if you're growing vines, you're going to normally see this. Look at that. See all those little nubs? Those will form roots once it hits the ground. And look at this. And by the way, the more roots it puts down, the stronger it gets. Take a look at these leaves. See, They look about normal, but look. As it goes, it gets stronger and more colorful. And it's an exponential effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach this thing around and I'm going to bury it and I'm going to lay it down on top of the pot as soon as I don't have a camera in one hand. And I'm going to lay it here and put some soil over it. And that's going to cause all of those bumps you just saw to put down even more roots, which is going to make this even stronger. So this is going to get bigger as it goes. And that's what I was showing you about how to make a pothos get stronger and stronger. Once it gets stronger, it's going to come out of here. I'm going to take the plant and I'm going to set it in a pot of soil and I'm going to let it root. And then I'm going to snip it off just like we do with strawberries. And I'm going to have a second plant. Oh, speaking of plants, might as well show this guy. Yep. This is my sago palm. Isn't that beautiful? 250 million years of history on this plant and it's just as beautiful today as it probably was way back then. It only has one frond, which is one stalk coming up so far, but I'm sure it'll get another one. At least I'm hoping. And this is a beauty. Look at this thing go. I wanted to show you this because it's just art, growing art. This is an apple gourd, and it's a vine. You can see up close, it's starting to get these little buds. But what I wanted to show you is the tendrils that come out. A lot of plants will put out tendrils, the vines. And what they do is they, they uh, curl around until they find something. And uh, the reason that they have these springs like this is to make sure, let me hold the camera steady, is to make sure they have some give because a spring is like a slinky. It'll have some give in case the supporting structure moves, it won't snap the, the tendril that holds it. That's why they're all spirally. But look at how this thing is just going right up this stick. Yep, it's a beauty. That is an apple gourd, normally an outdoor plant. I'm gonna grow it indoors. Let's go right behind it because this is bizarre. This is a voodoo lily. Yep, a voodoo lily is a real stinky number and somebody sent me two bulbs. This is the one that's doing the best. It sent up all kinds of stalks. And let me move around here and show you the stalk on this. Look at the color on that. It looks like a giraffe, doesn't it? Like a green giraffe. It sent up multiple stalks and then at the top of these stalks some leaves are going to come out. They look kind of like caladium leaves and eventually if I play my cards right and I take good care of this thing, I'm going to have a voodoo lily. And uh, you don't want to grow this if you have a weak stomach because voodoo lilies put out the stench of rotted meat, I believe. Yeah, that's lovely. I think it's to attract flies to pollinate them. I'm not quite sure. I may be wrong, but eh. don't know, don't care. Get this little passion fruit out of the way. Yep, I'm growing passion fruit. Somebody sent me some seeds for that. But I wanted to show you this. Yep, it came back. It was uh, having problems like all the other plants. This is a potato. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, yeah, you can grow potatoes inside. I don't know if I'm going to get any potatoes, but that's not going to stop me. It's a nice plant. And <laughs> this is a weird setup, but hey, it works, okay? It works. I tell people, whatever you have to do to help your plants grow. So I've been stacking these plants up here to get closer to the bulb. I ordered some new bulbs that are brighter because these ones are starting to dim. Compact fluorescent bulbs will dim as time goes on. And these are old bulb bulbs. I've had these for years. So it's time to replace them with new bulbs. But they're still growing stuff. And I wanted to show you something. Right down here, I uh, cut a couple uh, branches, little branch ends off of my uh, Honeycrisp apple tree. And I stuck them both into separate cups of vermiculite. One of them I tossed out because it wasn't doing so well. But look at the second one. Let me see if I can get in close enough for you. Right there at the tip of my finger, my little fat finger, there's a little bit of green. See? And right here, one of the buds opened up, and right up here, new green growth. Yep, all I did was I shoved it into vermiculite and just gave it water. That's all I did. And I think it's going to do okay. I don't know. I really don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before, but I don't let that stop me. Looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm having a good time here. This keeps me sane. In the winter when everything is dead outside and it's all snowy, I come down here and I just breathe some fresh air and I just enjoy it. And um, the room is slowly taking shape. Everything is a process for me. Like I told you before, my whole thing is a journey. And um, so as I go, you're going to see more and more things added to this room. Some things taken away, some things added. But I wanted to show you something that I got for Christmas. I got a lot of good Christmas presents from you guys, and I really do appreciate them all. And I don't show them all, but um, that doesn't mean I don't appreciate them. But this is something that you're going to see on the wall throughout the year. And I wanted to explain it to you because it's not just a regular thing. Anything you see on these walls means something very special to me. And I want to show you this. This is a calendar. And uh, somebody took pictures from my Facebook and uh, made a calendar. I, apparently, there's a way to do this online. This is a picture of the tree behind my house, and that's my house. Yeah. And they made a calendar. This is uh, one of my chicks. Yep. And each month is going to be something different, but it has to do with my house. All of these are pictures. This is a, a, an icy picture of my window that I took. Kind of neat. And this is a window to the chicken coop with a little egg. Yeah, I took this picture myself. It, it looks pretty good. Everybody said, you should frame it. Well, it looks like somebody finally did. Isn't that something? Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I got four of them. And I sent one to my mom because uh, she can't get here uh, anymore because she's having health problems. So I sent one to my mom so that she can share in the uh, pictures of out here. I sent one to my sister. And uh, my sister is still going nuts from all the people contacting her. She's got a lot of pen pals, and she's been writing letters and just having a great time. And um, uh, one to Mike's mom, Mike the dishwasher, sent one to his mom. And um, I have one here in the voodoo garden. So, yeah, I'm definitely putting these to good use. I love this thing. Everything in the voodoo garden has something special in, in, in way of meaning to me. Everything has a story, and I think that's really kind of cool. But... Um, don't worry, folks. The Voodoo Garden is doing a lot better, and it's going to survive, and it's going to thrive. i got to actually take the time. This is a mess. This is actually the cleanest this room has been in a long time. I cleaned this area so that uh, you could come in and take a look, because normally I have stuff laying all over the place. Dirt, pruners. It's, it's, it's like a, a greenhouse to me. People ask me, Ray, why don't you get a greenhouse? And I'm like, well, I got one. Yeah, it's called the Voodoo Garden. But um, thank you, everybody, for joining me in the Voodoo Garden for the update. Everything's looking good. Keep your fingers crossed. Everything's going to get even better. I'll talk to you all next time. Until then, this is Ray in the Voodoo Garden. I'm out of here.